In this topic, we're going to talk about how we can refine our XPDL results by using postprocessors. Postprocessors, as the name indicates, perform postprocessing on attributes of extracted entities. So this is done outside of our XPDL rules. Now, we have five different types of postprocessors, as you can see here. And I'm going to talk in detail about all of them and their options. But first, let's talk a little bit about the benefits of postprocessors. So first, it allows us to do batch processing, so we can apply the types of processing we want to all extracted entities, without having to do modifications in the XPDL rules for each of these. Second, it has a very intuitive and user-friendly graphical user interface, so it makes it easier to do our post-processing without requiring additional uh, knowledge of the XPDL rule structure. Now, the first post-processor we're going to talk about is aggregation. It essentially merges entities with partially coinciding attributes, and it gathers all available information for the same object across entities. Let's look at an example. So here we have this claim record, and we'd like to extract the insured party entity. The entity we'd like has the following information extracted as attributes. So we can extract the party this claim refers to, which is the insured, and we can identify the vehicle type and the color of that vehicle. And we can also assign fault for the accident. So if we don't use the aggregation post-processor, this is how the scattered information for the entity is extracted. As you can see, we have partially coinciding attributes. So the aggregation post-processor combines these results into a single entity. And then we notice the frequency changes to two. This is because it was mentioned in two different sentences in our record. So let's do a small test with some examples to see if we understand how these entities are merged and why some of these may not be merged to a single entity. So in this example here, we have the following entry. Now, will it aggregate? Yes, these entities match up on vehicle and color. So these entities would merge successfully. Now how about this one? Yes, these entities also match up on vehicle and color, so this will aggregate gate two. So how about this one? No, in this case there is a conflict in the vehicle color listed, so these entities wouldn't merge successfully. Next, let's talk about the semantic links postprocessor so that you know what it is and how it works, even though it's mostly used in the medical domain. So this postprocessor derives additional attributes of entities by using semantic dictionaries, which we also call ontologies. And these ontologies contain related word concepts listed in hierarchical relationships. For example, the MEDRA ontology lists the uh, naming of conditions and symptoms that are used when reporting uh, drug-related adverse events. So let's look at an example. This record here states that abdominal bloating and hiccup were observed after drug administration. Now, abdominal bloating is considered a type of adverse event. And in the MEDRA ontology that we have in Polyanalyst, uh, the preferred term for abdominal bloating is abdominal distension, and it has a specific code associated with it. So what the semantic links postprocessor is doing is that it searches through the MEDRA dictionary for the preferred term of the extracted event, such as abdominal bloating in this case. And based on this ontology, 
The system understands that abdominal distension is a more general term to refer to abdominal bloating. In other words, it's a hypernym. So this is what the host processor adds to our extracted entity. The next post processor we'll talk about is normalization. Now, this one handles some of the tasks we can perform using uh, XPDL case and form normalization functions. So the normalization post processor changes the formatting of entity attributes, and it has several different options, including synonym merging, case normalization, form normalization, trimming, string replacement, and digitizing. So let's go through an example of why normalizing our output is important. Suppose we're trying to capture car seat as a car part. So if we look at the parts we extracted, we see that we have some synonyms for car seat, such as baby seat or child safety seat. We also have some different capitalizations, uh, grammatical forms, and also some extra words such as the that we don't need. So here's some example text. It says, the child seat is not properly installed. They drove the car to fire station and had the car seat adjusted. Now, let's start with synonym merging to take care of the different expressions for car seat. Ideally, we'd like these both extracted as car seat. But right now, these are listed as separate entities. So if we use synonym merging normalization, car seat and child seat will be standardized to a single expression. So now the entity will appear in our output as car seat, and the frequency is now 3. Now in order to apply this post processor, we have to select it in the normalization settings right here. Now below this, you see the settings for case sensitive and part of speech, as well as the dictionary to select. Then we need to select the synonym dictionary that we'll use. In this example, the synonym dictionary we want is a custom dictionary called objects. If we open that dictionary, we'll see that in the entry for car seat, we see both child seat and car seat. But the H symbol next to car seat indicates that this is the preferred term that will appear in the output. Next, let's take care of our case normalization issues now. And suppose we have the following text that reads, the insured was driving a blue Toyota. The blue Toyota ran the red light. So we want to capture the vehicles as entities. And again, we'd like to capture Toyota as one entity. But without normalizing the case, the system treats the two instances of this entity as two different entities. So when we use case normalization, the system understands that this is a single entity and the frequency increases to two. We can also normalize form with the normalization post processor. So here we have a similar case where we want to capture valve cover gasket as a car part entity. Again, without form normalization, it's treated as two different entities by the system. But once we use the post processor, it's treated as a single entity. Let's talk about trimming now. Trimming essentially takes off parts of the extracted information that you don't need in your attribute. So in this example here, we want to capture the street, which is part of the address where this police department is located. Now, depending on how we extract an address, it usually includes some numbers, like what you see listed here. But if we're not interested in the numbers, we can use trimming and remove them from our output like this.
And here's how we access these options in the Entity Extraction node. We select Trimming in the Normalization setting, and then we specify the option for Left and Right in the Trim Anchors, and Digit in the Character Classes. So what you should also notice here is that we don't have the option to directly trim words in the Character Class list, unless they're included in a stop list. We'll talk more about stop lists later. Next, let's consider this example here, where we're trying to capture valve cover gasket as a car part entity. And we notice the system discovers two very similar instances of the car part, but of course, since they're not exactly the same, it would return these parts as two separate instances. Now, the reason we get this is because the car part phrase was extracted using the chunk function. So the article the is being captured. But if we want to normalize these, we can use the string replacement post processor to remove the article the from the output. So string replacement in general replaces a string with another string. And that other string can also just be nothing, in which case it'll just remove the first string. So with the string replacement post processor, this is our result down here. The settings for string replacement are similar to what we saw before. So we choose string replacing in the normalization settings. And then we check whole word and regular expression in the settings down here. Now we'd be able to use any regular expression we want, depending on our needs. And as you uh, see in this example here, we just have it searching for the article the and replacing it with nothing. So this will effectively remove the article if it appears in the output. And the final normalization option is digitizing. This post processor comes in handy for things like this, where we have a number written out in the text. So, without digitizing, the number 3 million is captured in words, as it appears in the text. But once we use the digitizing post processor, descriptions of numbers are converted to their corresponding numerical form. So the output is returned as a number, like what you see down here. Let's now talk about the stop list post processor. This post processor is often used as an efficient way to get rid of false positives in sentiment analysis. So in this example here, we have some text that reads, the cleaning effect is very strong. However, the mint taste is a bit strong. Now our goal is to try and find positive comments about toothpaste. So the system would capture the following from our text, effects strong and taste strong. And normally the word strong has a positive connotation in most situations. However, in this case, it's actually negative when describing the taste of a toothpaste. So if we add strong to our stop list when it's describing taste, the system won't consider it a positive sentiment in that situation. So, as you can see down here, it's no longer captured in our positive sentiment evaluations. Now, in order to use this post processor, we need to have a stop list word class. And as you can see here, we've now selected the stop list word class, which in this case is named not positive comment. We can then take a look at this word class if we click on the file menu at the top of Polyanalyst and then choose Manage Dictionaries. And we see that in the lemmas for this word list, we have Taste Strong, which is what we don't want captured in our positive sentiment evaluation. Now, this is the final post-processor we'll talk about. So sometimes when we have tables in documents, they're imported just like any other text part of the document. 
This means that the text won't necessarily exhibit the structure it had when it was in tabular form. So without any post-processing, a table like this is read and extracted like continuous text, which is not very useful for us, as you can see down here. So what we can do is use the table post processor so that we can tell the system that this is a table and that it should be extracted in a structured form. So when we apply this post processor, it structures the output in a way that makes more sense so that it's more useful to us. And as you can see at the bottom here, each cell is now its own row in this output. So let's take a quick look at the settings for the table post processor. Now the only thing you essentially need to specify is which attribute contains the text that you'd like to have output as a table. So in this list, the attribute would be the first one listed, where it says required. Otherwise, everything else is automatically generated. So, now that we've gone over post-processors, I'm sure a question some of you might have is, when should I use the post-processors, and when should I use the XPDL functions for normalizing my output? So, a good rule of thumb is the following. If you'd like to quickly normalize the results of all your rules, then you should uh, use the post-processors. But if you're only wanting the results of some rules normalized, then you should use the XPDL functions. Uh, to give you some quick examples, here are cases where the post-processor and the XPDL functions give you the same results. But here are some examples of some other things that might happen. So in these cases, the post-processor would also apply normalization to things like ABS, thinking that it's the plural of AB. Or it might see the word left and think it's the past tense of leave. So to mitigate these issues, we can separate these out in our rules and instead apply the XPDL function in part of the results. And in this table here, we have a comparison of some of the most common tasks of the post-processor, as well as some alternative ways of getting this output, either with uh, XPDL functions or even a different node based on our specific project needs. So now, let's try some hands-on practice with using post-processors. In this hands-on practice, we'll go over how to work with XPDL post-processors. Now, we're still working with our car repairs data set, and we're trying to extract car parts and issues from the text. So let's go into the entity extraction node and look at our output. We see that our rule extracted car parts and issues here. But we notice that we have uh, redundant car parts, uh, like these two forms of wipers. We also see that similar issues are repeated, such as streaking and streak, as well as things like oil leak and oil leaking. Now, let's take a look at how our results output displays when we use post-processors. So I'm going to switch to a version of this rule where we already applied some post-processors. Let's first look at the normalization post-processor. Now, we can see that the output for the normalization post-processor changes our entities to title case. So we don't see entities in all uh, uppercase letters anymore. And we also see that the uh, car parts are now standardized as their singular form. Okay, let's review where we find the post-processor settings. So let's click on the properties here, and we make sure to select the post-processing tab at the top. So this shows us all the post-processors we've applied. If you wanna add a post-processor, you just click the plus sign icon here and uh, select the one you want from this list. So 
the post processor we're using here is normalization. So once we select normalization, we also need to select an attribute to apply it to um, in the uh, post processor options window here. And you add attributes by clicking the plus sign icon here and then selecting the uh, attribute you want from the drop down menu. So here are all the attributes we want to apply normalization to. We want both the uh, car parts and the issues to be standardized uh, with respect to case and form in our output results, which is why we have four instances listed here. Okay, so now let's go back to our results after normalization. And let's go into our next post-processing task, which is um, the uh, aggregation post-processor. So in the results of this example here, we only really see one change. We've merged the issue leaking oil into the issue that was related to the uh, valve cover gasket. So let's run through how this was set up. Let's go into the properties and select the post processing tab. Now, once we select aggregation, we also need to select the attributes to apply it to in the post processor options window here. So our goal is to aggregate uh, common sets of entities that are extracted and merge them into a single entry. So we do this both with respect to the car parts and the issue attributes. Okay, now let's move on to our last post processor for this example. We're gonna take these issues here and try to standardize synonymous terms. So we see here that there are multiple ways of describing things like an oil leak or coolant leaking. So we can use the synonyms post processor to handle this. And here's what it looks like uh, when we now apply the synonyms post processor. We see how this uh, consolidated all our uh, synonymous issues related to leaks. Now let's just go through how we apply this post processor. So let's get into the properties view and go to the post processing tab. Now, when you add the synonyms post processor, you also need to specify the attribute in the post processor options window here. And in this case, we want to standardize the issues. And for the settings, we select verb as the part of speech to standardize. And we can uncheck the case sensitive box. And here's where you would select the uh, dictionary to use. So this is the results of applying all our post processors. And as you can see, we've come a long way from our original output results. And this concludes our topic on XPDL post processors. In our next topic, we'll talk about how to deal with overlapping entities and other conflict resolution tasks.